Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling all of us that all the worldly enjoyments, all the worldly wealth, the riches are much, much inferior and the hereafter is much better as compared to that. Allah says in Surah Hadid, verse 57, Allah says that the life of the world is what? Mata'ul ghurur, a matter of illusion. And that is why Allah keeps on telling and talking about the life of a hereafter in Quran. And then Allah in Surah Al-Ala mentions the preferences of his bondsmen as بَلْ تُقْثِرُونَ الْحَيَاتِ الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَةُ خَيْرٌ وَأَبْكَى But the actual condition is what? That you, you O bronzemen, you prefer the life of the world, although hereafter is better and it is eternal. The teachings of Quran, the teachings of Hadith and Sunnah actually want that the cry of the heart and the soul should be Allahumma la aisha illa aisha al-akhirah O Allah, there is no joy other than the joy of hereafter. How important, how important hereafter is as compared to the material world. Hazrat Mustarud bin Shadad radiyallahu ta'ala anhu reports in Muslim that Prophet sallallahu said, he explained giving an example, he said by Allah the likeness of this world as compared to the hereafter is, is that someone of you took out his finger after dipping it in water and then saw how much of water it had brought with itself so Allah subhanahu wa Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is explaining the importance of the material world as compared to the world or the life hereafter. The water sticking to the finger after being dipped in water is what the life of the world is as compared to the water of the seas or the oceans, the fathoms and fathoms of the depth of water of the ocean. What comparison does it have with the water which is sticking to the to the finger after it's dipped in water? Hazrat Jabir radiallahu ta'ala and who reports in Muslim that Prophet was walking on a roadside that he passed by a dead young goat whose ear had been cut off and he he talked to the companions and he asked that will anyone of you would like to buy this dead kid for a dirham? And the companions obviously said that they would not want to do that. And then Prophet said, I swear in the name of Allah that in his sight, in Allah's sight, this world is as worthless and as useless as the dead kid is in your sight. So this is exactly what the worldly life is in the sight of Allah. Hassan Sahal bin Sa'ad Sa'adi radiallahu ta'ala and who reports in Musnad Ahmad Tarimzi and Ibn Majah that Prophet said that had this world been to Allah equivalent to the wing of a mosquito he would have he wouldn't have given a sip of water to the infidels or to the disbelievers actually what Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa is trying to explain in this hadith is that the fact is that this world is altogether vain and valuable, valueless in the sight of Allah. It is totally valueless and worthless in the sight of Allah. That is the reason why the unbelievers and the deniers of Allah are getting in this world. Because in the sight of Allah, this world is actually of no importance. That is why Allah is providing and giving provisions to the unbelievers and to the deniers. And if it, it was not so, and if Allah did not consider hereafter so important, in hereafter, which is of real worth and importance in the judgment of Allah, 
not even as much as a drop of fresh water will be given to the disbelievers or the deniers of Allah and the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So the worldly life in the sight of Allah is even less important and insignificant than the wings of a mosquito. How, how unimportant this life is? Hazrat Abu Huraira who reports in Muslim that Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, the world is the prison house of a believer and the paradise of the non-believers. So, for a believer, believer this worldly life is like a prisoner's life. Why is it so? Because, you know, a prisoner's life is that he is not free in whatever he does. He cannot carry out what other, he just has to carry out what other people command. He eats and he drinks what he what is given to him. He sits and he stands where and when he is asked to. He has no will of his own. So that is exactly what a believer is in this life. And another point why the world is considered as a prison house for the believer is that a prisoner does not feel attached to the prison at all. Never would he consider it as his home. He will always be eager to get out of it. But in contrast to that, a believer in paradise will have no restrictions. There will be no restrictions. He'll be free to do as they please. And all their wishes will be fulfilled. And moreover, no, no dweller of Jannah will want to leave the Jannah. And no dweller of Jannah will get tired of living in it and be wary of the comforts of it. So that is why Prophet ﷺ has likened the world, this worldly life as a prison for the believer and as a paradise for the non-believers. How important the hereafter is as compared to this worldly life, this life is short. This life is short, the hereafter is eternal. This is temporary, that is permanent. This is inferior and that is superior. I just narrated a hadith a few days back where it was reported in Bukhari that Prophet Sallallahu gave, it was a very lengthy hadith and I will be just summing up the whole message. The Prophet Sallallahu explained that a person who was who was a blessed person in this world and who had who had who had so many blessings and bounties of Allah and he had like no tensions and no nothing to upset or distress him and he was like one of the happiest and the blessed people in the world and on the day of judgment if he was if he was to be given just one tip in one, in one pool of the fires of hell and then he would be asked do you know of any comfort? Do you know of any liars? He would say no by Allah I've never experienced any comfort and any enjoyment in my life. And then Prophet Sallallahu explained that there would be a person who would be a deprived person who would be deprived in the in this worldly life and he had he was deprived of all the bounties and blessings of Allah and he he had spent his life in all forms of distresses but then when he would be on the day of judgment be given just a one tip in one pool of Jannah and be asked were you ever distressed do you know of any miseries he would say by Allah I've never been distressed. I know of no distresses and I know of no miseries. So this is what the eternal reward and what the eternal punishments are going to be about. The bounties of this world as compared to the bounties of Jannah, the golds, the silver and the riches of this world as compared to the gold and silver and the riches of Jannah where the palaces one brick of gold and the other brick of silver studded with pearls and rubies and emeralds 
and the worries and the tensions of this world and the miseries and distresses and the agonies of this world comparing to the distresses and the agonies and the torments of hell and plus the hereafter is going to be eternal we we learn we learn what the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that on the day of judgment death will be death will be summoned in the form of a white ram and then it will be slain in front of the people of paradise and the people of hell and then the people of hell will be told that now death will not be attended on you and the people of paradise will be told by the angels by the angels of paradise the people of the paradise will be told that now you will always be young and youthful you'll never get old you'll always be healthy and strong and never you will get sick and weak you'll all you'll always be staying here and you will never be asked to leave and you will always live and you never will die so these are these are the blessings and the bounties of hereafter as compared to the world Hazrat Abu Musa Ashri radiyallahu ta'ala anhu reports in Musnad Ahmad that Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam says whoever loves the world shall damage his hereafter